Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Cooped Up Podcast. The podcast that is for all time, always. As always, folks, my name is Koopa, and each week I sit down with either myself or a guest, and in this case, uh, this week, it's both of those things. We talk about all the happenings of pop culture and what's going on in the world. This week's folks, we actually got a two-part episode, kind of, sort of. In the first part of this episode, uh, you will be hearing me uh, talk about the season finale of Loki, uh, the third installment of Marvel's television shows for Phase uh, 4, uh, as well as talk about some big picture stuff of Phase 4 as the finale for the show. Whew! My goodness. Things got real, real weird. Uh, and later on, you guys are going to hear me and my buddy Nintunis sit down to talk about Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl, the platform fighter uh, from the devs of Slap City, featuring some of your favorite Nickelodeon characters and what sort of you know things we can expect from that. It was a really, really fun conversation. Uh, but first, before we get to that, folks, uh, we got a TV show to talk about. And in, in typical cooped up fashion, you know, I feel like Marvel has such a, a big part in this show because of how you know how much i personally love it how you know much stock i have invested personally uh and metaphorically in marvel um and i gotta say ever since the start of the year you know 2020 was a a needed refreshing year from you know the mcu and marvel content in general so it was really nice to have that sort of refresher course after the infinity saga had ended and now i'm like both feet fully back into the into this fold baby I'm so excited. Um, so, you know, just a, a, a flash of the screen here to let you guys know we are going to be talking spoilers uh, for the first season of Loki, uh, which, again, is kind of a spoiler in itself because Loki uh, has been renewed for a second season. So that's really exciting. I'm very, very excited about that. And we're going to talk some big picture stuff. We're going to talk about the season finale in general, the first season of Loki as a whole, where it kind of stacks up in the pantheon of Marvel's other TV shows. And I got to say, I was not necessarily sure what to expect from the show when it was first announced. I thought it was going to be, you know, pretty monster of the, you know, monster of the week, like Loki traveling through time a la Doctor Who, uh, you know, sort of deal. Uh, and even then, when they showed that first episode, you know, it makes you think that they're going to go on a a season long chase of Loki's uh, of the Loki variant that's causing trouble across timelines. And lo and behold, what we get is the jumping off point to how phase four is going to get thrown all the fuck thrown out of whack. Um, so, you know, just as well, we'll start with episode six uh, for all time, always. Uh, and then I'll, I'll talk a little big picture stuff about how I felt about the season and what the implications uh, and some questions that I have, uh, you know, moving forward in phase four. And I'll say this is the first of the three Marvel shows that has stuck the landing, in my opinion. As much as I enjoyed WandaVision, as much as I enjoyed the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, because we're getting to spend time with these characters you are, you know, you don't usually get to spend a lot of screen time with. They're usually just there, you know, as comic relief some some punchy you know b plot you know uh sort of subject material so i was excited to spend time with those characters in that regard that was a lot of fun um and as much as i enjoyed wandavision as a show as much as i enjoyed you know captain winter soldier as a show like i said they didn't really stick the landings that well like you know we, you kind of knew where falcon and the winter soldier was gonna go the ending felt a little all over the place um Granted, it was, you know, it was fun seeing some seeds planted for, you know, uh, from other future projects in both these shows, which I think is why the landings weren't necessarily stuck as well. You know, peop you know if you watched WandaVision, you know, you'll understand that, oh, you know, this show could have had big mutant uh, multiverse, um, you know, set up potential. Lots of talks of Mephisto potentially appearing in the show uh, that did not come to fruition. Uh in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, there's lots of talks of, oh, maybe we might be getting the Thunderbolts. You know, there's they're essentially setting up the Thunderbolts without, as, uh, you know, uh, you know, blatantly saying the Thunderbolts. But, you know, they kind of dance past that for a, a later date as well. And Loki's the first of the Marvel shows that really gave us um, that big, like, you know, uh, what the fuck, uh, you know, reveal at the end where you find out in episode six that the creator of the TVA, the Time Variance Authority, 
uh, was indeed uh, He Who Remains, uh, played by Jonathan Majors, who, if you're not familiar from his work in Lovecraft Country, uh, which was nominated for an Emmy, by the way. So congratulations to Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors was also cast to play Kang the Conqueror in the upcoming Ant-Man sequel and in the Wasp, Quantumania. So, you know, Kang being a time-traveling villain, Loki being a time-traveling show, kind of made people think like, oh, you know, maybe this is where, uh, you know, Kang might get tossed into the mix. But, you know, people, I I feel, and myself included, I'm, I wasn't really sure how much of these shows were really going to bleed into the movies because, you know, they announced that WandaVision was going to have its storyline intertwined into the second Doctor Strange film, which was the first announcement of the Marvel shows and the movies kind of combining forces. But I wasn't expecting Loki to drop such a, a crucial, you know, character concept and idea uh, in its season finale, which was wild stuff. So um, that was really, really cool. Now to talk again, you know, we're kind of doing some broad strokes here. Um, you know, obviously at the, 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 the concept of, of Loki, if you haven't been watching, you know, Loki, uh, this is the 2012 Loki from event from the first Avengers film, um, who obtains a Tesseract and escapes. Uh, he is then caught by the time variance authority, which are essentially just time police to keep weird things from, you know, not going out of place in the timeline, the sacred timeline, as they call it. Um, you know, Loki is then recruited by a worker from the TVA, Mobius A. Mobius, who, or Obius, uh, I think it's Mobius M. Mobius, that tracks. It's Owen Wilson in with a mustache. Looks really cool. Um, you know, they set up the series as, oh, you know, Loki has to find, uh, the Loki variant, uh, which is a, a version of you that exists in another timeline, uh, which is causing chaos amongst the sacred timeline. Uh, you later find out that that variant turns out to be Lady Loki, played by Sophie uh, Di Matteo, I believe is what her name is, um, or uh, Sophie Di Martino, excuse me. Um, but yeah, and then what eventually you think is going to turn into a grand adventure of Loki trying to find himself turns out, you know, with him teaming up with uh, his female variant, later to be known as Sylvie, um, and you know the the two <laughs> spark this weird. Uh, chaotic relationship and it eventually leads them on a journey to discover who created the TVA and you know through some cameo appearances and some references to some other Thor comics later it eventually takes them to the Citadel out in the middle of space and that's where you get introduced to Jonathan Majors as he who remains at the end of time and I gotta say visually this last episode looked great Um, I granted it was probably all shot in front of blue screens but I don't care it looks awesome and it, it definitely felt a little exposition heavy at, at first. It was a lot of info dumping and not a whole, you know, not a whole lot happening, but they kind of needed to do this, I feel like, because one of the things that is a little is very intimidating about, you know, phase four of the MCU is that they are going to attempt to, you know, tell these these multi universe sort of stories without completely alienating their fan base. Like as 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 chaotic as it is to watch, you know. 23 movies uh you know to under you know 22 movies to understand the uh the extent of what the infinity saga is is already a big you know commitment and undertaking and you know to ask people to do that again plus with tv shows plus with a much more uh confusing topic subject in you know what's your universe what's a fake universe what's not real what is real it's going to get fucking weird man uh and you know, Jonathan Majors playing as, you know, the the man, uh, you know, he who remains the man at the end of time pretty much explains that nicely. And he explains it to Loki and Sylvie being like, hey, you know, uh, I first discovered, you know, multiple universes stacked on top of each other as a scientist in the 31st century, which is, again, a reference to the fact that Kang the Conqueror is an alternate universe son of Reed Richards, Nathaniel Richards. Um, you know, that opens up the possibility. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I discovered variants of myself. It was peaceful at first. And then it was Kang and his um, and his variants that caused the first multiversal war. And then, you know, uh, <laughs> he who remains essentially explains it, it's basically just Kang playing a version of Immortus, uh, which is, you know, which is, again, another uh, alias that that Kang uh, takes in, in Marvel Comics. And I, I'm definitely blowing. I'm definitely assuming that most people 
know who Kang the Conqueror is. Kang the Conqueror is like a a a huge villain in Marvel Comics. He's a classic Avengers villain, you know, created by uh, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby in the 60s. Uh, Kang has taken on many forms as Kang the Conqueror, Nathaniel Richards. Uh, he's, he's played a an Egyptian pharaoh. Uh, at, at one point, he's had relations to Dr. To Dr. Victor Von Doom. And it, it it goes all over the place. So it's 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 a very fun villain, especially for what their Marvel's trying to set up in this upcoming um you know block of the MCU. So uh that has me very excited, especially seeing how Jonathan Majors performed in his first unofficial role as Kang the Conqueror. Um he's I'm I'm so excited. I, I'm ready to watch all of Lovecraft Country. I, I need Ant Man injected into my veins. Um it's going to be dope. So essentially, you know, the he who remains offers Sylvie and Loki a deal. It's like, hey, listen, you guys don't have to kill me uh, because if you do kill me, you're going to unleash thousands of my variants onto your timeline and the timeline's going to go to shit. Uh, he offers them the opportunity to stay behind while, you know, he who remains moves on with their life. And, you know, they get the opportunity as Sylvie and Loki would then get to run to TVA themselves. And Loki is very open to that idea, but Sylvie thinks that, you know, hey, this dude's lying to me. I've been searching my entire life to try to find this dude and kill him. Uh, I'm going to do it, uh, which sparks uh, some conflict. Uh, Loki eventually uh, gets uh, bested in combat by his partner in crime for the better part of the series. And then Sylvie uh, kills he who remains, thus plunging the multiverse into madness. As you see, you know, one of the most visually stunning things about this episode was just seeing like that giant beam of light, you know, going around, uh, you know, as the, the sacred timeline and then watching it just branch off into, into chaos was so much fun. And, you know, that's, again, that's a bulk of the A plot. A bulk of the B plot is, you know, Owen Wilson returning to the TVA to confront his boss, uh, Ravona Renslayer, uh, who is, you know, again, uh, you know, the, the head cheese, of the TVA, um, you know, and that obviously does not go well, but uh, Mobius does expose to the, the workers of the TVA that, you know, Ravona was lying to them about them not being variants, which, spoiler, everybody in the TVA is a variant that it had a life on Earth at one point. So, you know, Mobius attempts to confront Ravona. She ends up fleeing uh, with a tempad through a portal uh, after receiving some information from uh, Hugh, who remains at some point. So, we don't necessarily know where she's going. She mentions about trying to find free will. So I'm curious if she's going back to her timeline in 2018. Uh, if she's going to, you know, maybe try to venture out to find uh, who the owner of the TVA, you know, who the creator of the TVA is her own self, uh, which is very possible. That's what her her plot was a lot. And the character of Vona Renslayer does harbor a relationship with Kang the Conqueror in the comics. So all that is very much possible and on the table. So, um, you know, there's definitely a lot, you know, to, to stomach here. Um, at the end of the episode, Loki, you know, discovers that the TVA has already changed on timelines. Nobody remembers him from the TVA. Um, and there is a giant statue erect of Kang the Conqueror in the T in uh, you know, the the TVA building, you know, where most of of the central hub stuff takes place. So. Um, this show again, what the, I think the big point, I didn't think Loki was going to have this big of a footprint, but out of all the shows so far, I would say like Falcon and the Winter Soldier, not necessarily required viewing for going forward. Um, WandaVision, even though it ties into a movie, not necessarily required of you to watch it. I think you should watch those shows because I think they're good shows. I think they're well written. I think they're well acted. Um, but to understand what's going on in the MCU, you don't really need to watch these shows. You can just kind of get the Cliff Notes versions of what's going on. I think Loki is the first of these shows to evolve into um, into necessary viewing territory um, because of how much it sets up with Kang, because of, of the implications it could have in season two. This is going to continue to be issues that you have to deal with. There's rumors of Tom Hiddleston showing up in the next Doctor Strange movie that he might have a role in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness because, you know, uh, he has come in contact with Kang and knows what he's capable of. Um, and there's a lot of stuff to unpack here. You know, again, I was not necessarily the most, ex you know, 
thrilled about the show. Loki, I think Loki's fine, but like I wasn't sure how I feel about a whole series of him. And Tom Hiddleston's great. I I think Tom Hiddleston has uh has act completely acted his butt off in this show. Uh, he was phenomenal. His relationship with Owen Wilson, his relationship with uh Sophie DiMartino was fantastic. The entire cast of the show, um absolutely crushed it and i'm so excited for what season two of loki is gonna you know behold but i do have some questions going on to this and i have i have a, a four i have four questions you know of what of where the first season of loki has left me the first one being is this why we haven't gotten a spider-man trailer yet so it is one of the worst kept secrets in hollywood that uh you know there is going to be multiversal connections in spider-man no way home uh the third installment of the of the uh, john watts spider-man franchise coming out on december 17th um you know it's one of the worst kept secrets that alfred molina will be reprising reprising his role as dr octopus from uh, sam Raimi spider-man 2 and that um you know jamie fox will be reprising his role as electrode uh from the amazing spider-man 2 the uh andrew garfield uh helm spider-man films and I feel like half, you know, there's been rumors of like, you know, uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield showing up in this movie as, you know, a la a live action Spider Verse. There's been tons of, of rumors and innuendo about who and what is going to show up in this movie. None of it's been confirmed, obviously. And you know, there's been rumors that a trailer of this film has been coming for a while. You know, the film's about you know five months away, and we have no first trailer for it yet. And I feel like this is why they waited. I feel like Loki is really going, I think, you know, because of the events of Loki is what's going to spark the events of Spider-Man No Way Home. You know, obviously what the, we last we saw of Peter Parker, his identity was getting, you know, revealed to the citizen, you know, to everybody in New York City. Um, And I feel like the multiverse is going to prove to be a great, you know, plot point to how they're just going to kind of blow past that stuff, you know, and introduce a handful of Spider-Man, you know, into... uh into this movie. So I feel like the, the half the reason they waited, you know, for a trailer for this movie uh is basically because of that. You know, I think they needed to establish that hey, the multiverse is official, it's happening. Um it's not just a Doctor Strange thing. It's going to be a huge part of phase 4 moving forward. And it's going to be interesting to see how the wrinkles of this, you know, uh you know, plays into to other films and other uh you know, TV shows that may or may not tie in to bigger picture stuff. So I feel like I, I, now that, you know, Loki is finished and we're kind of getting into a, a drier period of Marvel stuff. I believe it's, uh, you know, we get a few weeks off before what if starts. And even then what if is an anthology series, it's not going to have any major, you know, uh, plot implications. This is going to be a fun, entertaining way to relax with, with Marvel content for a bit before uh, the next big show comes out. So uh, please drop a Spider-Man trailer soon. I need it. Another question I have, and this is one to ask my by uh, my friend Don on Twitter. He asks, "Is Loki kissing Loki self gratification because Loki and Sylvie do share a kiss <laughs> in the series?" The answer is, I don't know. Maybe I just think I just love how they play into the concept that Loki's a raging narcissist, and the only person Loki could love is Loki. I think that's great. The other question, the big question I have is where's Ravona going? I talked about it a little bit earlier. Is she going back in time? Is she trying to find Kang? Are we going to see a lot more of Kang kind of popping up in this stuff? Uh, which then leads me to the biggest question is how big of a role is Jonathan Majors going to have in phase four? Now, Jonathan Majors, again, was has only been officially cast as Kang the Conqueror in Ant-Man Quantumania. But like I mentioned before, there are connections where Kang is a descendant of Dr. Victor Von Doom. So there's very much a possibility where you can see uh, Jonathan Majors playing the role, you know, filling the role of several major villains in the MCU. You could if, if Jonathan Majors is on the table as Dr. Doom, if he's on the table as like other big villains, by all means, sign me the hell up. I think that's awesome. I think if this, you know, if some people might feel a little cheaped out by it. But I don't know. I just think the implications of Jonathan Majors being such a huge uh, Avengers level threat in every single property of these things because of the multiverse is crazy because I think another little confusing tidbit of the MCU right now is timeline wise. We don't really know where things stack up. You know, the first film of phase four was a prequel film. 
So we know that that happens before anything crazy happens, but we don't know where Shang-Chi takes place. We don't, you know, we can assume that the Eternals takes place uh, after the events of Avengers Endgame, uh, but it could take place in those five years, you know, after the first snap. We don't really know. You know, we're not really going to get a, a true progression of time in the MCU until Spider-Man comes out, until we know where we are in, in the present and, and how that's going to affect things going forward. So I think there's a lot of wiggle room here for, you know, uh, Jonathan Major showing up as a version of himself in Shang-Chi, showing up as a version of himself in The Eternals, not to mention shows like Hawkeye and Miss Marvel, which are slated to come out this year as well. Uh, you know, there, we could see... Uh, we could see a version of, you know, the Egyptian pharaoh, uh, you know, King the Conqueror in in Moon Knight because I believe Moon Knight does take place in you know in uh, in Egypt. So there's that to look forward to. There's there's so much to chew on here, and I'm so excited. It's going to be so much fun to watch. And again, I if I were to give Loki a recommendation, uh, it would be to watch it. I think it's required viewing. You really should watch the show again if you've made it this far. You don't care about spoilers, uh, but there is going to be big spoiler talk in this, obviously. Uh, I think the show is great. I think the cast was great. Tom Hiddleston was great. Uh, please, by all means, everybody, you need to watch this show. It is it is fantastic. It's avail All episodes are now available on Disney+. Plus. And listen, everything Marvel is also on Disney+, Plus right now. If there's ever a time to catch up, it's to catch up right now. It's <laughs> something I think that's really fun about what... Uh, Loki is now introduced. I think it's made the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes TV show like required viewing because that I think that does the best animated way, you know, without reading the comics that really explains like who Kang is and how big of a deal that Kang is. So I recommend everybody watch that. Uh, we're going to take a quick break before we get into our next episode, uh, next part of the episode with Nintunis. So everybody, please go ahead, listen to Loki, watch Loki. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Hello to whatever part of the episode you may be listening to this for. It might put this first, might put this last. I don't know, but welcome back to the Cooped Up Podcast, folks. The podcast that is uh, Mort only, uh, uh, no items, Hasselhoff. Is that what the meme is? Is that what we're, is that what, is that what we're riding with? <laughs> Von Strangle, Hasselhoff, uh, the Negachin, uh, Powder Toast Man. Your your whole repertoire of characters varies much like it would in Smash Brothers. You can say pretty much anything you want and it would be applicable. It's true, but yet yeah, uh, we are. If, I hope you guys enjoy the Loki segment of our show where I talk about the finale of, of uh, Loki this week. It's a lot of fun, but there was other news that happened this week. And I couldn't do it alone. This is a task not meant for just Ren. In fact, I also needed a I needed uh, Stimpy to come with me for this segment. Uh, making his return to the Cooped Up Podcast, folks. He is the host of the Double D Experience, and a <laughs> if there's like a hand, I can count on the number of of like if I was to go into like Nickelodeon Studios and like fight off zombified people in like character suits. I can think of two people I take with me, and you're definitely at the top of my list. It's Nintunist. Welcome back. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, if anything, I could say that uh, the announcement of what we're going to talk about of this game was not very low-key. Oh, God. Ugh. Uh, no. <laughs> Explain what? <laughs> <laughs> that you, Kyle Reels, was voted most likely to suck eggs in high school. I wasn't prepared for that. We serve food here, sir. Oh, don't make me do. do don't make me. Don't make me do bubble bath disorder. <laughs> <laughs> that that I will actually go in. I don't think I have the whole thing memorized, but I have. I have just enough of- I'll take a oh double triple cross it deluxe, on a raft, 4x4 animal style, light axle grease with a shimmy and a squeeze, uh, burn it and let it- fuck. I- I- <laughs> I, I, I- I don't think it's- I don't think that's literally what it does, but you know what I mean. There's like one part of it that I know I'm missing. Have you ever seen the actual sandwich? I've watched the Binging with Babish episode, yes I have. Oh, it's ridiculous, man. Like, you couldn't even fit that in your mouth. <laughs> I mean- 
it wasn't even just that that blew me away. It's like, and if you haven't seen it, watch the binging binging with Babbage. If you don't watch Babbage, you're fucking up. It's one of the best <laughs> YouTube channels like on the platform. And um, yeah, he did a a real recreation of Bubble Bass's entire order. And then at the end of the episode, he's like, "Oh yeah, there's a lesser known second Bubble Bass order." I'm like, "What? <laughs> huh? Wait, what?" Yeah, they they're apparently in like one of the newer seasons of, of SpongeBob, Bubble Bass has like another order where like he's like he wants <laughs> something with like pink Himalayan sea salt and like aged hayuda, which is like a type of cheese, I guess. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, watch the, the come on, David. We've Bubble, seen enough Marvel movies. Stay till after the credits. Bubble you know what's Bass supposed to happen. Doesn't look like the guy who would know what an aged anything is. He looks like he's ate. He's. It's. I think he's eaten every single meal at the Krusty Krab for pretty much his entire life, except for that little known diner that's in like the frickin' sea in a bottle. That you know, Mr. Krabs takes like Mrs. Puff there. Other than that, as you know, dignified or expertise of food as he may seem, no, that no, that motherfucker were to eat a baconator every day of his life. In fact, he probably has. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Krabby Patty is probably whatever the equivalent formula of that is. Whatever bacon that they have down there, it's probably like some sort of sea scallop or something like that. It's it's what that man consumes on the daily. And I, I want you all to know, listening to this before we get into the, the, the bread and butter of this episode, which you've all seen from the title already, the, the obesity is a real epidemic affecting m millions of Americans. And Bubble Bass is just... As much as you may love him, he he's at severe risk for heart disease, and you should <laughs> you should just you look, go to the American Heart Association website, whatever whatever it's called. <laughs> you know, I vibe totally. And with help what you're your saying. local bubble bass today. <laughs> yeah, see, I vibe totally with what you're saying, but you're like using a cartoon fish that hides pickles under his tongue as the springboard for it. So, yes. like, I want to laugh, but like, I can't. <laughs> but I did. Do so, you think obesity's fucking funny. No, I'm fat. What are you talking about? You think this is a laughing matter? Good. I'm glad you're not laughing, Kyle. <laughs> oh God, what a what a can of worms you opened up today, David. How you doing? <laughs> what we, a jerk. Before before we get into the uh, one of the strangest announcements of the week, uh, how are you doing, buddy? How how uh, how have things been since the, your last appearance on the Cooped Up podcast? Uh, it's been pretty good, actually. Uh, this isn't the main topic of this episode, I should say, but I feel like it's noteworthy to, uh, bring it up. I work at the American Dream now. At, uh, Ooh, that, that's uh right. the entertainment retail center that was been in pretty much limbo hell for the last 20 years. You've all seen that New Jersey meme where you're just driving down the highway and you're like, what the hell is that abandoned looking structure over there? That giant building. That's the American Dream. And that place is cursed. Because as soon as it was ready to open, <laughs> COVID happened. <laughs> after like 20 years of being in development hell but like many other games that have uh, been in development hell it was finally released and it was everything we dreamed of and more really sick place and the reason i bring it up is because uh it is where the nickelodeon theme park is one of the biggest yeah. indoor theme parks in the area and uh, i think frankly on the country i believe really cool place you've probably seen that picture of riz riding on oppa that's that's where it's from <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> I, that man was at, like literally on top and within his spirit animal that day Hey Google, what? how do I cosplay Samurai Appa? I I love that. Also, like it, it's <laughs> people that like don't live in like this specific area of New Jersey will just like don't understand. Like that has been a taxpayer like eyesore for literally since I was in like the fifth grade, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is like sixteen years ago. And I keep hearing that the malls kind of lit. So like I'm very much looking forward to whenever I get an opportunity to like actually go there. So I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully it's fun. Yeah, man, say hi. Uh, passing by one of the kiosks, I'll annoy you and sell you a yo-yo. I will walk past you like I have never met you in my entire life. So <laughs> what else <don't>... is new? <laughs> I bring this up, though, because uh, the other day it was SpongeBob's birthday. Actually, it was the anniversary of the character who the show actually came out apparently relatively near when Tom Kenny's actual birthday is, which is crazy coincidental. Oh, that, wow. that's the I case. I know that. Yeah, it was Tom Kenny's birthday this week as well, on top of SpongeBob's the other day ago. So some of my team members were doing like little trivia to the people waiting in line and whatnot. I'm a demo guy, so I wasn't doing that. I'm I'm the guy who like pushes different types of products, does demonstrations for them, just sure. annoys the hell out of you while you're walking through the mall. It's the same thing I do for <laughs> Nintendo. It's the same thing I do for Rise and whatnot. I mean, Nintendo it's a little more intricate, but you know the you know the uh, the shtick. And it's a really right. good thing I should say that they didn't choose me. <laughs> to do the SpongeBob trivia. <laughs> B 
because you would have caught you would have caught me throwing hands with a thirteen year old. <laughs> what? You don't know that Patron is from Chrome Bikini Bottom? Are you serious, you stupid little shit kid? And then they start crying, and I'm like, what? You don't know what country Patrick yelled when he got hit by Doodle Bob's bowling ball? You fuck! I, I can't. I can't do this. I, I can't. I can't do this. I'm out. I, I'm sorry. I can't do this. And then I would have Finland. Gotten... <laughs> it's like, you, how do you not know Finland? Like they, it, it would have been bad. It, 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 it's a good low key. It is that. one of my favorite like throwaway SpongeBob lines. <laughs> like... Oh, you kidding? It's amazing. Finland. <laughs> Vintage, dude, vintage. But I bring that all up because it's the meat and butter of this episode, which I'll try to segue over to my good, uh, your good host, Koopa here, is that my first day or my second day working at this place, the day that it was SpongeBob's birthday of all days, which I swear to God it was intentional, is when this particular game that we're going to talk about today got announced. As far yeah. as coincidences go, man. Kyle, what, what what's it all about, man? Yeah, I mean, without beating around the bush, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> one of the strangest announcements from Nickelodeon this week is that they are making a platform fighter. Uh, Nickelodeon All Star Brawl uh, was announced uh, earlier this week, like you uh, like you mentioned, and yeah, it's essentially exactly as we said it is. It is a platform fighter, you know, based around uh, you know, based in the style of, of Super Smash Brothers. Uh, except instead of featuring Nintendo characters, it features some of your favorite uh, Nicktoons characters. And I got to say, this definitely <laughs> caught me very much off guard. And our little, our neck of the woods really just kind of ran with this shit for like the better part of the last like three or four, you know, however, it feels like a fucking month, but mm -hmm. it's, it's only been like uh, two days, two, three days since this game was announced. So, uh, yeah, it's, what were your what what were your initial thoughts when you saw this drop? Because I was like, I was pretty, I I went from being like uncanny shocked to like like most people like pretty fucking excited for this. It could have been forever ago, as far as I was concerned, because you know Pandarian was tweeting that Twitter was unusable with how many people were tweeting about it. So that's how you know it was kind of it was something good. It's kind of how you know when like people are starting to get annoyed watching the trends. Uh, Shout out to Bandarian, broken ass Smash player. I uh, oh yeah, I, yeah. I'm just I'm just bringing that up because it was one of those things that it's only been a couple of days, but everybody's already talking about it as much as it is. And I gotta say, that's what sort of let me know that it was legit. Because when I first saw it, I just sort of glanced at it. I think I might have been working. I might have been doing something else. I don't remember. But when I saw that, like literally all my friends were talking about it. All my mutuals were talking about. It. I'm like, huh. Wow, this is this is is this legit like a Nickelodeon Smash Brothers? And then I saw that um what is the what is the dev uh, Ludosity? Did I pronounce that right? Yes. The people who made Slap City made this game. And that was when I knew. I'm like, <laughs> yo, we are living in an actual timeline where a Nickelodeon Smash Brothers game is real. Doug Dimadome is Dimma done waiting? <laughs> is the actually might it, that might be real now? That might not be an unironic meme anymore. He might actually be Dimma done waiting. Like yeah. straight, straight up, I never thought we would see the day. And I personally, like seemingly most everybody else, my friend, my first thoughts were like, "Oh, is this legit?" Then I saw that it was. I'm going to I'm going to come out and say this right now. I'm probably going to be repeating a lot of what I said on my recent episode of my podcast which you can check out in the description below. Yeah. I am legitimately <laughs> Love how you more... assume I'm going to put it in the description below. You I, I I I do you you're going to do it. You can talk all that shit from behind the Riverside screen right now. You're going to be the bigger man and you it's, will do it. You have It's true. I'm I'm not even going to say it. I'm not I'm not <laughs> going to say what I wanted to say. You're lucky. But I'm not I'm not even going to lie. I'm no meme here. I am legitimately more excited for this game than I am for the final Smash Ultimate DLC character, and I am not even joking. I, I, I'm really that hyped for this game. D dude, it's got Reptar. You can play yeah. as Reptar in a fight. You can play as Nigel fucking Thornberry in a fighting game. This is real. It's real. That's my thoughts, dude. When I was talking with Dennis yesterday, it literally felt like I was in a dream. It literally felt like a weird fever dream talking about it, that there's going to be a legitimate game that they're trying to see if they can even possibly make into a legitimate eSport for Smash, uh, for, for, for Nick All-Stars, see? 
Like I'm already yeah. getting them confused. And <laughs> with a repertoire of characters like Nickelodeon, dude, I think it's possible. I'm hyped, man. Yeah, no, you echoed a lot of my same sentiments on that. Like, there's like a handful of people whose opinion I hold like pretty highly when it comes to like how they feel about games. And <laughs> one of those people is mutual friend R Hungry. Oh yeah. And when I saw that he was excited about this, I'm just like, wait. I oh, this might actually like have some legs behind it. Cuz you, you know, I've played when I saw this game got good first announced, I was immediately taken back to the Nickelodeon Mario Kart clone, uh Nickelodeon Kart Racers, uh which has spawned actually two games, fun fact, interestingly enough. And I've actually played a lot of that game. <laughs> it's a it's uh it's you know, it plays like any sort of Mario Kart clone, like Except it's just Mario Kart, but like slightly like less polished. Uh, but it's like the same concept. It takes a bunch of like you know IP from Nick. You get to play as like essentially almost all the characters here, sans like a couple of different ones. And then you also have the ability to like you know get buffs and debuff characters, um, which are also like Nickelodeon property characters. So you race on stages that are based off like you know existing places within nick cartoons such a there's a stage based off double dare which is really cool no wait, hope... wait really yeah like in the right in the racing game there's a stage based off double Dare. oh i thought so. you were talking about all stars i mean there's i mean i wouldn't be surprised that's a it's a, it's a nick property and like oh, I, that's see where i'm kind of so putting my brain sick. on this is like you know so i saw this i was like okay this is interesting and like you said they're they're <laughs> they definitely pulled an interesting like reveal roster for sure, you know, you get some of your, you know, your standards like you would expect being, you know, SpongeBob, Sandy Cheeks. Uh, <laughs> but then, like, you know, like you mentioned, like Reptar wouldn't have been like necessarily my first choice, but like it fits for a fighting game, which makes sense. You mm -hmm. know, Powder Toast Man from Red and Stimpy wouldn't have necessarily been my first choice, but it fits for a fighting game. And then, you know, you get some oddballs like Oblina from Isle Real Monsters and Nigel fucking Thornberry. <laughs> you have to put the fucking in there. Which, for by the way, I don't know what it is about him, but he just looks like a DeBuzz character. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Like, I, I just have a gut feeling, like, looking at the screenshots. I have a feeling this guy's going to be obnoxious with this character. That's all I'm saying. I'm willing to believe that, but... Yeah, it, it's like just looking at the roster, like looking at the polish, seeing some of like the set locales you can play on. There is a stage based off the Flying Dutchman ship. There's an oh, Earth so Temple. Sick. There's an Earth Temple stage. There's very clearly a stage based off what I believe might be like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like area. But yeah, this looks like, you know, legitimately exciting. Like even from like I was looking at it from like a casual perspective. And then you start getting an inkling of like who is involved with it. Like you mentioned was Ludosity who you know, created Slap City, and depending on who you talk to, uh, and Glenn mentioned this on his podcast episode he did this week, um, out now for patrons and friendos, uh, but you, um... You're gonna shill for his, and then, like, when I talk about mine being in the description, you're like, oh, who says I'm gonna put that there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was just curious. It was a serious question. Go on. Yeah, 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 you know. Look at look at the description. There might be some shit down there. We don't Maybe. know yet, but... Um, yeah, there's, like, you, you kind of take a look at, like, um, you like depending on who you talk to, what Glenn's on his podcast, people who like you know will swear by Slap City being like one of the best platform fighters, if not the best platform fighter. I don't know if I'm willing to go that far, but like I've from what I've played of Slap City, uh, I've enjoyed it. I'm, have you played a lot of that game? Never touched it once. Really? Yeah, I've never even played Rivals of Aether. I mean, I actually have played Rivals of Aether once, but I've we I'm weird about that game. The fact that it's literally on a 2D plane, like all the sprites are 2D, that messes me up. There, there's something about like not seeing like a Z axis that makes me not be able to visually tell, not not being able to visually understand the animations as much. They look a lot more of the same, kind of like a Smash commentator talking about Kazuya. Like, yeah, I can pretend I know all these terms. But I, <laughs> it's going to be hard to memorize a character with that many normals. It's the same for me with Rivals of Aether. Like, uh, I just, I look at it and it's weird. And Slap City, I've never played before myself, actually. But I have seen it. Yeah, I've I've only played it for maybe, like, an hour or two in, like, a hotel room. Like, at a Smash tournament. Right. And the game is goofy. You can play as, like, uh, like, a giant hot dog. You can play as, like, a diamond. Like, there's, like, the character roster looks really goofy in the game plays really goofy but like from what i understand it's a lot of fun like i from what i played i really enjoyed it like other platform fighters are definitely like 
a dime a dozen. You know, for every Rivals of Aether you get, you get like not that. <laughs> and like, you know, Slab City, unfortunately, you know, at least in this neck of the woods, didn't really have like a great, uh, you know, shelf life. But I know in like other regions, you know, people still really enjoy that game. And listen, if, if the devs behind, you know, this game, like get like, you know, Nickelodeon funding to make a Nickelodeon fighting game. And I don't know if you read the Kotaku article that came out today. I'm assuming you did because you brought it up, but mm -hmm. you know, they really have high hopes for this game as like a, a competitive esport. And when you, when I heard about that and I'm just like, you know, you hear that, Oh yeah, we're adding wave dashing into the game. It's going to have rollback net code, <laughs> which is insane. Like I laughed about that for like 14 minutes <laughs> on the like, show. Dude, it's crazy. Like they're putting, so much polish in and like you know they're they're hit, saying all the right buzzwords to get people like into the concept of this game and like even if it's like a hot sack of garbage on arrival which i don't i doubt it will be considering all the things that i've heard so far like this could really have some like serious legs you know especially when you think about like the monstrosity of a company that nickelodeon is because yeah. i think some something that like i didn't realize until i was hearing other people talk about it is that you know, with Smash, obviously, there's a lot of, like, hoops you have to jump through because there's so many third-party, you know, characters and, and, and stuff like that. So, you know, you know, Sakurai doesn't necessarily have, like, all the creative freedom to do what he wants to do. If Nickelodeon's, like, creating and funding their own fighting game, think of the IP of characters that they have. Like, there, as someone that's, again, like, played a Nickelodeon, like, you know, a recently produced, like, Nickelodeon game, their IP is, is fucking, your IP catalog is fucking huge. So, like just think of like the free reign they can add think of the characters that can add to this game that like you know it's it the possibilities feel like it's endless and it makes me feel like the roster itself is going to be like humongous in itself because think about this helga is a confirmed character in the game right now mm -hmm. but not arnold they're not gonna put helga in the game and not arnold so you know arnold's in it like, none of the Avatar characters are confirmed yet, but if you look at the box art, you can see Aang and either Katara or, uh... It's probably I, gonna I, be Either Katara or... Hey, I thought it was... It looked like Korra, that's what I was gonna say. Either them, so you know they're gonna be in it, and, like, the, the Air Temple is a stage. So that's how you know. This is what I was talking about. Like, you know, for one reason or another as to why this game could be so successful, I feel like there's a notion, because of Smash with platform fighters, that... They're this big celebration of IPs or like a, but one company or multiple companies' IPs all coming together. Smash is not as popular as it is just because it's a fighting game. It grew into that because Smash grew from being a love letter to Nintendo to just a giant love letter to gaming. Like that game, like it has like it takes all these different worlds and creates a world of its own with it, uh, of its own in it, right? Not too many other things or like companies that can do that or have that many crazy iconic IPs. Some of them might have enough IPs where it could work, like uh, <laughs> All Stars, and the game still flop, or or Jump <laughs> Force, and it'll also flop. But that game flopped for different reasons. Why the fuck it wasn't an anime fighter instead of that dumb 3D looking like diarrhea looking monstrosity? I will never understand. But you, you see what I'm saying, and I couldn't agree with you possibly more if I tried. Nickelodeon just has such a vast history and library of characters. SpongeBob SquarePants, I would argue, is more iconic or popular than than The Legend of Zelda. I don't think he's more popular than Mario, but he's up there. Like, he's like the face of a medium, you know what I mean? He's the face of cartoons, just like Mario is like the face of gaming. This is This could be huge in regarding that. Like, Cartoon Network tried to do something like this, but it didn't have, like, you know big like smash platform fighter style devs like making that game it was a much more low budget game it wasn't taking itself as seriously just like oh maybe this will sell or whatever this is different you saw that kotaku article talking about how it could be legit it has rollback netcode <laughs> which smash does not have which dragon ball fighters does not have which street fighter 5 does not have we're living in a world ladies and gentlemen all these games don't have that shit, but the Nickelodeon fighting game does. This is the timeline that we are living in, my friends, and I am completely about it. And I think it's going to be huge, and they're going with that same Smash-style approach, like I said, because there are, like, secondary or tertiary characters of the franchises that are confirmed where other ones aren't. Like I said, Helga's in, but, you know, Arnold hasn't been confirmed yet. Powdered Toast Man is confirmed as a character, but not Ren and Stimpy, though Ren and Stimpy might not be in the game for... 
very different reasons, which I doubt either of us want to go into here. <laughs> it looks like they're there, man. I think, like... Uh, you think? <laughs> I don't know. Dude, I'm about it. I love Ren and Stimpy. Like, I get I it. Like, it's, it's very, like, it's a lot. <laughs> Especially, like, in you know, in a modern time here. But, like, it's still, it, like, they're, you know, they put them in the kart racing game. I, here's the thing. If I'm going off of what Nickelodeon's, like, roster was for this kart racing game, we're looking at at least a roster of 30 characters. And mm-hmm. probably more than that, because characters like Oblina and um and like Powder Toastman weren't playable characters in that game. They were just like assist trophies, pretty much. Yeah. But like all your favorites are there, you know, plus also something I've maybe I've like missed out on this. Is Loud House really like that popular of a show? Dude, oh my god. Like, can I say something real quick? Please go ahead. Loud House is going to be the fire emblem of this game. <laughs> <laughs> not SpongeBob. It's going to have so many characters, and all of us from like this generation is going to be like, oh god, who? The DLC is going to come out and be like, oh god, another Loud House character. God d- damn it, Loom, the Ludosity. Freaking, why do you hate your fans so much? Why do you love Fire Emblem? Oh, excuse me. Why do you love Loud House so much? Do you see what I mean? Like, yeah. it's going to have so many of like these characters <laughs> that we're not going to recognize, but that's a beautiful thing. Because this is going to bring, like, the boomers and the zoomers of Nickelodeon together, which is another reason that this game is set out to accomplish a lot of the many things that Smash did. Smash brings so many people together because, like, there'll be new people who be like, oh, look at this new character. Oh, Pyron Mithra, yes, finally! Like, so many people were happy about that character. Then a character like Sephiroth or Banjo will drop or Pac-Man will get added and, and my grandpa or my grandma will walk up and they'll recognize Pac-Man. It's like they put in something legitimately for everybody and it bridges gaps and bridges that generation together in a way that not many other games really typically do at the very least in terms of recognizability and like iconicism nickelodeon will though yeah i get that and from what i've like heard and like seen of i've seen like bits of loud house just like uh when i'm like you know my nephews are watching tv and it's just on and for what i understand like the show is like written really well it's got a banger of a theme song i'll say that it's got like a real in, in an era where theme songs feel like kind of by like the bygone uh it's it's got it kind of slaps and i'm into it but um yeah like the, the roster choice is, is definitely like a little jarring and i feel like we're still gonna see like a lot of those characters i feel like you know if it, it, for me it was just a little weird being like really like we get you know two spongebob characters three spongebob characters i get it two ninja turtles i get it which i forget is like a nickelodeon like thing now because the teenage Mutant ninja turtles have been like properties under like multiple umbrellas yeah and, like but like to see like two loud house characters and like the premiere trailer i'm just like this is that's an odd choice fire <laughs> but, emblem dude yeah yeah or Earthbound, I get it, maybe but... i don't know i feel like zim's gonna be the ness of this game if anything because he's from like a series that hasn't had anything new and god knows how long at this point but he's still here still part of you know our legacy and our repertoire probably gonna be broken and then people are gonna be like god from an irrelevant franchise just like hey man us, but... i'm here for it as a former like as a reformed emo kid, Invader Zim was like gospel <laughs> to oh, like yeah. some of these kids. No, like, it was a great show. Yeah, it was. It's it's a phenomenal show. Everybody, p- for crying out loud, please watch it wherever you can. Like <laughs> me and my <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doom to doom doom doom. <laughs> I want to play as Guru. I have a big old cup of poop, please. <laughs> it's, it's like there's, there's so many lines that like, are so funny, and like, oh, I can't wait to see all these franchises like represented. Also, the Urkin Armada stage like looks like it's gonna be like tournament legal. It looks like it, Battlefield. It's legit, <laughs> like, dude. I'm telling you, it's legit. This is Smash Brothers to the letter from the wonderful world of Nickelodeon. I think Cartoon Network is one of the only things that could have done this, and they already kind of pooped the bed with it. Maybe Disney, but, like, they already have their crossover thing in Kingdom Hearts, which I feel like a JRPG was much better for, like, their type of franchises. Holy moly, I'm so excited for this game. It's cross- I think it's probably going to be cross-platform as well. It's on the it's on last gen. It's on PS4 and Xbox One on top of everything else, Switch. Uh, I'm probably going to get it for PC, just so I'm scared it'll lag. I don't know how good it'll run on Switch. I'm yeah, probably going to wait to hear how good it runs on it. But Yeah, yeah one, of the, one of the things that I was, like, concerned about is when I said, you know, roll back on supported platform just leaving to believe that like next gen consoles are probably going to get left in the dust on that so i'm probably going to get it on pc i'll probably get it on switch to like play it on the go but and that's kind of crazy like the reality we're talking about where i am talking about getting a nickelodeon fighting game on two platforms david it's insane (laughs) Uh, well jimbo you gotta turn that mindset into a grind set (laughs) You have the opportunity to uh, to uh, play on the go, Jimbo. 
<laughs> hey, kids, good luck tonight. And remember, <laughs> have fun with it. Oh, my God. I'm saying that to everyone at every fucking local. Oh, my God. That's perfect. Yo, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Everyone shut up. Everyone shut up right now. Everyone listen to me. Any TOs listening to this podcast? RJ, I know you might be. I know you might be tuning in. I know you might be in here, Sh- Sh- Sheldon. Maybe all of you, all of you beautiful people, all you Jersey TOs. If you don't end your bracket registration announcements, if you're on the megaphone at the end of the event before you start calling matches, if you do not say, "You kids, good luck tonight," and remember, have fun with it. If you don't end you know, your little monologues with that. You you don't deserve the you do not deserve the privilege of running Nickelodeon All Star Brawl locals. I'm I'm just I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> All right, you just you better do it, or I'm gonna have to start doing it myself. And trust me, you do not want me to start running tournaments. I can't even run my life. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it's not happening. So yeah, let, let's 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 well, let's talk a little bit of you know we've talked about the characters that we're gonna see mm-hmm. again. There's there's again gonna be potentially characters that you know haven't been revealed yet there's the possibility of post game like dlc and and releasing stuff if, if things go well three so, loud house characters <laughs> i mean Going there are three loud house characters playable in in nickelodeon kart racers so it's it's very much possible and by this should have been in the base game man <laughs> oh, man. uh but like so let, let, let's talk a little you know again about you know where the potential of this game could go and let's also talk about like you know who who's a character that you would want to see playable in this game outside of like some, some obvious ones. What's a deep cut Nickelodeon character that you'd want to see playable in this game? Oh, deep cut. Uh, that doesn't count Hugh, right? Cause I, a lot of people want Hugh. I would say uh, Hugh is definitely probably like my number one choice. If that could possibly happen. I don't know if Mark DiCarlo is just messing with us and he's like, has like voice lines recorded for this game. However long in advance, cause voice actors love to do that specifically because they have to sign NDAs mm-hmm. and they can't, they're not allowed to talk about their projects until they're out uh, for obvious reasons. Cause they don't want to spoil it. So he could very well already be in the game or very well might be DLC. We don't know. You don't want to know the absolute deepest cut. I have my friend. Are you ready to hear this? I'd, I'm afraid, but also intrigued. Go on. I'm not memeing. Like, I'm not talking about, like, no Nick at Night DLCs. I'm going to play as Bill Cosby or John Stamos. Like, I'm not, like, it's not a meme pick. I'm dead serious here. I'm going to go out on a limb and remind everybody that Viacom owns Garfield. <laughs> they oh, purchased no. Garfield two years ago, probably so they could make another show for him on Nickelodeon because Cartoon Network used to have those rights. If Garfield is in this motherfucking video game, oh boy, I'm quitting my job. I'm, I'm quitting my life. I'm quitting social relationships. I My mindset will become a grind set, unironically. I will be the best Garfield man in the world. You heard it here. I don't care how bad he is. Unless he's really, really bad, in which case I'll probably just switch to Patrick because he's got, you know, that stupid down B that's invincible and pushes your shield away on stun. I don't know why that it has both. It doesn't make any sense. Patrick is definitely, like, pr- on disc DLC. Busted-ass character. <laughs> if Garfield's grab in, range? Like, crazy. Pfft, Squidward's gonna have grab range if he's in, but we'll talk about that later. Honestly, my deep cut <laughs> pick is Garfield, because I think he could legitimately... I don't think he's going to be in the base game, if anything, because I don't think Nickelodeon owns him, Viacom does, but Viacom owns Nick. I could very well see Garfield technically being like a quote-unquote third party and being DLC later on down the line. And if he's in the game, that's my deep cut pick. I would love to main Garfield. <laughs> Honestly, I've I've seen like the post circulating around that the thought of that is terrifying. <laughs> like, I don't know if I could like... I, I, I don't know if I could survive in an, in an era... Where I could hear someone screaming across the, the venue, man, fuck Garfield. <laughs> like, it's just like. I, Unironically. Yeah, like, I don't see. I, I've been thinking about this for the last couple of days. Like, there's some, like, really obscure, like, Nickelodeon, like, cartoon characters mm-hmm. I can add to this game. Like, Cat Dog as a principal is pretty fucking weird. Because Cat He's Dog, definitely like. In it. Yeah, definitely in it. I mean, Cat Dog's one of the most, like, recognizable IP for Nickelodeon, despite not having done anything with the IP. Especially in like in an era of like remakes and like reboots and stuff, like they've done nothing with that series since it ended. Um, <laughs> my like, I think f- some obscure picks would probably be like I don't know, like a Nick Junior IP. Like I've heard, oh. I, I, that's the thing. I've been reading rumors for this game, David. There's rumors that like 
Dora the Explorer might be in this game, which is like crazy. That would not like, be surprising. I saw a picture of, of of Oswald the octopus like pop up on my on my screen today. Like, <gasps> I saw that. Yeah, like, like they need to put him in, in the in the game if it's if if there's any god. Uh, my deep cut is I want to play as face face from Nick Jr. But as a stage, I want him to be like the I want him to be like the picto chat of like Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl. Mm. We're just like shit goes crazy but i don't know like there's so many like weird obscure like nickelodeon like cartoons or references that can go for maybe like uh psh, let me think like maybe like a uh kablam or something like that like i don't mm. know like one of those uh prometheus and bob as like ice climbers i don't know like something some weird like deep ginger. cut stuff like that for the 90s kids oh that's mm, told that, would by be, that would be interesting that would be that would be fun ned bigby <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so here's the thing. There's a Ned's declassified rep. Ooh, boy. Here's here's the thing. You can't even, like, joke about that stuff. Because JoJo Siwa is a playable character in Nickelodeon Kart Racers. So, like, oh, God. You, could, you, could, you could very much, like, like <laughs> realistically, like, put a humanoid character in this game. You could play as Keenan and, and or Kel. Like, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm sure oh, why not Lord. both? Like, oh, that's, awesome. like that's, that's the thing. Ninten like, not Nintendo. See, now I'm doing it. Like, Nickelodeon has such, like, a vast, like, array of stuff they can choose from their own stuff is that, like, they don't really need, like, the, the presence of third-party characters because any of these characters being in a fighting game would be fucking weird. Do you think Sandy's gonna have a kill confirmed called the Bust a Nut? <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go. You can feel free to remove that. I just wanted to know if you. I just wanted to know. If, I'm <laughs> keeping it in because it's funny. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, good. Thank you. I'm happy to hear that. Not everybody would. Oh, this is why I have my. This is why I have my own podcast. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely. This is why. Oh boy, but um. Well, thank again. <laughs> yeah, man. So many. Uh, Professor Finbar Calamitous. He could be in. I would love to see that him in a man. I would want to play as Plankton, who I think could easily be in this game because he would be the guy. He would be like the character that fights in a mech suit. You know, that would be dope. They I'd did that for that. um the SpongeBob Mario Party game. You remember Lights, Camera, Pants? Wow, yeah, I do remember that game. Yeah, you want to talk about deep cuts way back in God knows how long that game released. That's like I was gonna say 2007, but that was a GameCube game. That was way before 2007. Might have been 05. Uh, you could play as Plankton in that game. And most of the time, you could hardly even tell it was him because he was in a mech suit. Because otherwise, how's it going to work? He's literally two inches tall. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that would be another one I would love to play as Plankton because he's one of my favorite characters in like anything ever. If I'm being honest, oh, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Oh my God, it's like the Ickis. It's like the possibilities are. I this is what I'm saying. Like there, yeah. there is no company that could actually like do this effectively. If Mr. Krabs is in this game and he has any move where that triggers a voice line where he says money, like it's. It's over. I'm, that's there's so many. This is the kind of thing where we get so excited about it. Where there's like five characters, like six characters. I'm talking about. We'll be like, oh my god, oh my god, dude, oh my god, dude, oh my god, dude, instant main, dude, instant main, oh my god. And it's like I'm saying it about six characters. That's how hype we all are. Like this is not a meme. We're really excited about this game. Yeah, and uh, now if, if there's one thing I'm I'm skeptical about, it's actually something you just mentioned. So. One of the biggest complaints of, like, the Nickelodeon Kart Racers game is that there's actually zero voice acting at all in the game. Like, oh. there's, yeah, so, like, there's no, like, I, I, granted, this is only a, a trailer, and I don't know. If there's, like, actual, like, game dev money going into this, I'm sure maybe they'll try to contact those people, especially because if it's a Nickelodeon, like, you know, um, if, if it's a Nickelodeon, like, funded project, like, I'm sure they'd have no problem getting, like, you know, the the voice talent of, of some of their more popular shows. But that is one of the, the downsides of that game is that there's there's no voice acting. It's all like sound effects and like stuff. So there's really it really leaves a lot to the imagination. Mm. And I feel like some of the best aspects of, you know, games like Smash and stuff are is the, you know, the voice acting. You know, you get to hear uh you know Mario and Link grunt and fight each other and hear Pikachu say its name over and over again. So I, I feel like that if there's anything that'll like maybe like knock this game down a couple of pegs from like, you know, an enjoyment factor, like just casually, it'll be that. So hopefully yeah. they ho ho hopefully there's, you know, some semblance of like voice acting or sound effects or uh, like SpongeBob <laughs> or whatever. So. Sound design is everything. 
That's so important in literally yeah. every medium. Imagine a horror movie where like it's completely silent the whole time. I, oh, that exists. Oh my god, I d dude, I realized it as I said it. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I was okay, gonna say let, this is. Let me come so up. A little with bit, a... Bit, no, let, let me let me let me pitch an idea, David. What if there's a horror movie where you're in this place, right? But it's like really quiet. Oh, shut up. What if it's like you know? I I think like what, what could you call something like that? Like. <sighs> Like a place that is quiet doesn't roll up. What about a quiet place? That sounds kind of like it's, it sounds eerie and creepy. You can get the guy from the office to be in it. Like total, just kind of spitball well, here. It's kind of random. What, what, what do you weird think? choice of character right there? But but uh, sure, I think that name sucks. I uh, should probably call it something <laughs> like marketable, like a, the the library or just quiet. I think the movie actually could have just been called Quiet, but no meme. All right, but uh, second of all. <laughs> Shut up. Let me think of a better analogy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like, imagine, like, uh, sound design is so important. Like, there's certain, like, effects where, like, sometimes, like, something in a movie, like a plot twist or a plot point won't hit you as hard because there's literally, like, you know, a drum beat in the background that makes your heart jump. Like, these things are designed in a way that's important, like, uh, that, that really is important to the the moral of the, the moral of the story the plot to the plots of the story like imagine like a movie that's supposed to be all sad without a score like you know the end of like or the ending sequence of shawshank redemption imagine all of that without the music it wouldn't have the same emotional effect it's it's so important and so like a game like that without voice lines yeah that sucks that's gonna completely ruin my immersion and it would do the same for this game if they don't have like if they don't have like the voice lines and some of these characters are actually now that you mentioned it some of these characters are really old i don't know like how many of those voice actors are still working if some of them are retired or anything like that right, so yeah that's actually i never even thought about that kubo that is a that is actually a genuine fear that would really that would take away a lot from the game that would ruin my immersion personally yeah i mean it it's it's definitely something that i feel like a lot of people forget about and granted like if the game still plays well, like, I'm sure people, like, get past it, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm definitely, like, very intrigued about this game. Is there, like, an official release date? I don't know if I've, that's actually been, like, revealed yet or not. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, Nickelodeon, which, by the way, hate the title. I wish they just called it Nickelodeon All-Stars. You did not have to throw Brawl in there. That's completely unnecessary. That's just my piece, because I'm not, I'm not calling it the whole title Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. I'm not doing, like, Nessub... I'm just calling it NAS, like it's, oh, here, 2021, awesome. It it did say in the fall, is what it said. That's what yeah, the trailer so said, at least. Probably, but, like, a next know. September, October release date, yeah. I'm expecting. And I'm probably going to be pushing this game, if anything, actually. <laughs> that's that's crazy. I didn't even, this is not what I thought was going to happen, but this is where we are. I feel like this is where, like, a lot of us are at with this situation. And, like, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm optimistic, I'm, like, cautiously optimistic about this. Again, like, there's enough good people involved with this they're saying all the right shit to get like everybody excited it's got rollback it's got wave dashing <laughs> it's got you know like nickel you know colorful nickelodeon characters like if there's anything that like even because uh another thing that like you know glenn has mentioned in his in his podcast before and other people said this before too is that people that play smash tend to like all kind of like the same things like everybody can you know like um like pe people that like smash like don't really like you know, watch like movies that aren't like anime related, but like I feel like everybody, no matter like what walk of life you come from, like likes Nickelodeon cartoons, like because of how like long running <laughs> Nickelodeon's been. So like, mm -hmm. I feel like this is if there's ever a game to like unite like multiple fan bases and like bring over people from different sorts of you know walks of life in video games, it's definitely like a a Nickelodeon fighting game that features all like the best aspects of like the really successful fighting games. Yeah, like. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be wild and i'm you know i think i speak for both of us where we're, we're we're very excited um is there a character off the bat that you're like really excited to play as uh that's confirmed for the game so far yeah let's go with that uh for that's confirmed i would love to play as patrick i i think it's just insane i mean patrick's one of my favorite characters in spongebob of course he's he's bringing me brought me so much joy as a child i'm just looking at the screenshot of the flying uh the flying dutchman uh the flying dutchman shit man like the stage is so cool looking the colors are so vibrant and i'm yeah. looking at spongebob blow the bubble and people have been theory crafting like a move set for spongebob in smash for years and now we don't have to like imagine that anymore <laughs> like it's a real thing it's actually legitimately real and ugh, 
I, it's I fucking guess weird, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is just so absolutely weird. I can't wait to see the references. I can't wait to hear the music remixes. And like, I, I assuming that these things are going to be in it, stuff like music remixes and whatnot, because uh, it seems like you, you said with rollback netcode and wave dashing that they have done their research about this game and they're really trying to make it legit. So I doubt they would skimp over like a detail like voice acting. I doubt they they would just not make any new music for the game or anything else or like remixes of like classic songs and whatnot. Dude, there's gonna be a I've 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 joked about this. For, I'm pretty sure I've tweeted this as a matter of fact that if SpongeBob ever got into Smash, that there would be everybody would be making combo videos or the first combo video of him would be played out to Stadium Rave. <laughs> <laughs> is that the jellyfish song? No, no. Yeah, I mean, oh, yes, yes. The one where he's dancing with the jellyfish. Yeah, and now that's 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 a real combo video, dude. That's going to happen. That's a real thing at this point. And what I'm concerned about more than anything else... um. Actually, let me let me relay the question back to you, since you're this is your show. You're you're the flying Dutchman here. You're piloting this ship. Hell yeah, uh, that's me, baby. Um, what about you? Uh, out of out of the characters confirmed so far, who are you looking forward to playing the most? Uh, see, it's it's such a hard choice because like like <laughs> with, with Smash, there's like definitely like blind spots in like the games that I played, but like with with all of these shows, I've literally seen like even Loud House. I've you know I've seen like five minutes of it. I've seen all of these shows at least in like some capacity. For like a minute, like I'm obviously excited for SpongeBob. I love SpongeBob. It's a it's a foundational piece of my personality. Yeah. So like I'm definitely excited to play him. Um, Powder Toast Man, just from a ridiculousness standpoint, I'm excited about because I I love Ren and Stimpy. I think it's one of the like you know it's it's such a fantastic cartoon. Uh, if but the one that got me like super duper hype is Danny Phantom. I mm -hmm. love. Danny Phantom. Show, that the is show one is of, so underrated. The show is incredibly underrated. I absolutely adore it. It's one of my favorites. I've I I just like the, the thought of like you know going ghost and like he's got like just such a cool like he's got like a fighting game moves that already he might be a Shoto. He's got a fireball. He's got a you know he might have he might have an uppercut where his fists are glowing. He's got that weird like roar thing that he gets in like the last couple the, seasons the of the ghostly show. whale. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, like, it's just so much possibility there. And, like, I am so excited to just, like, you know, get to, like, <laughs> play as Danny Phantom in a fighting game and, like, mm. punch people. It's fun. I'm, I'm so excited. And, like, for other characters, that, like, I want them to add, like, you know, I, I think it'd be a crime if there's, like, no, like, Timmy Turner or, like, Fairy Loud Parents representation as, like, this. It's, like, in my opinion, like, the second biggest Nicktoon of, like, the modern era, like, yeah, I like Jim, like Jimmy Neutron representation would, would would be great. Um, I would love Rocco's Modern Life representation. That show is fucking fantastic. Give me a choky chicken stage, <laughs> like every day of the week. Like I need it. Like give me, yeah. uh, give me like uh, a really really big man Echo Fighter to Powder Toast Man, and then he they can like you know square it off and like really big man can punch you with his nipples like just mm. just get like like give me just give me the weird shit man like i and it's it's all on the table i can't i, I can't wait to see like what other information this game gets released in the next few months because i am so excited i'm about it too my friend and uh speaking of roster if there's one thing that i the one thing that's been on my mind as well dude it's i don't know if the release date for this game was deliberate if it's intending to be sort of like a competitor to Smash, because if they are, they're releasing it at the perfect time where a game like Smash, which would pretty much be destined to overshadow a game like this, because it's like sort of like fighting against like your god or like what you're like what you were created from. It's the time is now, and uh, it, might I explain my piece? Please go ahead. I need everybody to think about this for a second. All right, we are not out of the woods with Ultimate yet. No. There is one more character. Everybody is saying that Ultimate, oh, it's so, oh, God, it's so balanced, man. I just feel like every character can do something. Most characters at a decent level. Yeah, there are tears still, but, like, at least my character can still do some things and can have fun with them, and they would be completely right. I think even, like, the low tiers in this game have some stuff. Dr. Mario very well might be the worst character in this game. He's got a lot of good stuff, though, still. Not that he's, like, super viable. He's not, but you get what I'm saying. We all felt the exact same way about Smash 4. And that was pretty much true about Smash 4 as well. Uh, Smash 4 really had a pretty diverse uh, roster of uh, pretty balanced characters. 
until DLC came around. Cloud was busted, and we're like, oh, wow, this is crazy. Then Bayonetta came out, and they had to make two patches, the last of which was a patch completely dedicated to nerfing this one character in Bayonetta, which they had never done, ever before. Every patch in that game had a, myri a myriad of changes from a bunch of different characters. That patch only nerfed Bayo because the character really was that broken. We got yeah. all the way up until the end with the last DLC character, and then she legitimately ruined that game. There is one more character for Ultimate. Who is to say that this character... Who is to say that they won't repeat their lesson? Uh, re won't repeat their mistake here? Like, in Fighters Pass 2, a lot of the characters are really stupid. Nothing game-breaking. But this is definitely, like, the true Smash 4 DLC pack. <laughs> compared to Fighters Pass 1, for sure, in terms of viability or broken characters. And here's the thing. I think if this last character is, like, Bayonetta-worthy, which I think the chances of that are slim now that Dante's a me costume... Which, <laughs> thank God that that happened. Yeah. No disrespect to Devil May Cry fans, but he's been broken in every single fighting game he's ever been in. All right, yeah, so he would have no. been pretty busted here, too. Just, if, just look up Zero May Cry and, and thank us later. Yes. If this character winds up being that broken, and then they're like, oh, Ultimate's done. I guess we're done patching it. Right at the time as this new game comes out from an actual developer of a very high-end and successful platform fighter game with a vast library of IPs and wonderful iconic characters that'll breach the gap of generations such as Nickelodeon, that makes me feel that Nickelodeon All-Stars can actually go out and reach its goal of becoming a legitimate esport in the realm of Smash dominance because they'd be coming out at the time when Smash Ultimate is pretty much going to become a legacy game for Nintendo like Odyssey or Mario Kart 8 or Breath of the Wild, games they made years ago but are still selling. That, I think Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl has a chance, especially if it releases at the right time, which it seems like it's going to since I believe the last DLC character is going to come out this year. I don't see why they would wait till next year to release the last DLC character. Well, Sakurai Smash. said the, the, like, that character's releasing this year. They just didn't say when. So oh, okay. Yeah. My guess it's probably going to be around like Christmas time. Right, right. Probably. Point is, all that stuff combined, I think it could be a perfect timing, perfect mix of storm for Nickelodeon All-Stars to actually put a little bit of a dent in the syndication money of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for Nintendo, especially if the last character winds up being legitimately game-breaking, like Bayonetta was. And like I said, we didn't think that was going to happen with Smash 4. Last character ruined the game. The very last character. So who knows? Master Chief could be fucked beyond repair. Sora could be fucked beyond repair, whatever it is. I doubt it, but I'm just saying we're not out of the neck of the woods yet. Smash will probably always still be king, but I'm just saying I think there could be a perfect storm coming up this uh, this winter and this fall that could genuinely help in pushing this game to achieve its apparent goals that it wants, according to Kotaku, of being a legitimate esport, my friend. I want to get in on the ground floor of commentating this game. If I could, if, if this game winds up at Evo, because <laughs> it can, it's it's yeah. just all possible, yeah. man. That's my piece. I don't think too many people are thinking about that. I think people are still in like sort of the meme phase of this game, but I think they're I think they're going to learn soon. If this yeah. game really winds up being as good as it looks, we might be in for a wild ride, Koopa. You brought you brought up a couple of really good points there. Um, number one being that like I definitely plan to like take this game like as seriously as I can because like my problem when it comes to getting in other fighting games is that there's nothing like attaching me to like what I'm playing like I like like I, I I enjoy games like Street Fighter and like Marvel vs Capcom and you know Guilty Gear like I enjoy those games I think they're fun but like I I've, when it comes to like these like Smash clone fighters it feels like it's very different like I feel like the half you know, a big part of the appeal of Smash is that, like, it's Nintendo characters all beating the crap out of each other. So, like, you know, when I've played games like Icons or Slap City or, you know, Rivals of Aether, like, I don't really feel that, like, attachment to these characters because it's like, yeah, like, they function like Smash characters, but, like, they're not Smash characters. And, like, I feel like something like this where it's just, like, I love Nickelodeon. Like, all these cartoons are, like, right in my wheelhouse. Like, there's something, like, very, like, passionate there for me to, like, give a shit about and, like, latch on to. So, like, if this game is, like, any semblance of, like, not toxic, like, 
I'm down. <laughs> I'm here for it. And like, if you even if you think about it, like best case scenario for this game, like you mentioned, like big esports money, Nickelodeon has it, you know, enough money under the bed to like airs on CBS because Viacom owns CBS. All yeah, like yeah, stuff. tons of tons of free advertisement on like apps like Paramount Plus and stuff to like push their product. So like, there's tons of avenues for this game to be huge and blow up and like you said potentially be it like on the biggest stages of fighting games and then like you then that's like the ceiling you look at the floor for this game like if this game turns out to be like rivals of aether that's still pretty good rivals mm -hmm. has its own like fully fledged functioning scene that are, are like doing really well for themselves and provide like you know big prize pools uh you know to their own regard so like even if that's like the best case scenario for this game like that's still pretty good and rivals i'm not trying to like take you know broad shots at a barn because i think rivals is, is, is a fun game i you know it's just that when it comes to super smash brothers it's really hard to share the stage sometimes and rival has shared the stage with smash multiple times and if that's if that's like a scenario where this game you know for nickelodeon all-stars brawl i have to keep remembering to do that like mm. by all means i think i think it's this uh shaping up to be something very very uh successful yeah and honest to God, if there's, like, something even better in the future, like, Nintendo has added, like, all these characters from their competitors. We've got more Sony characters. We got more, like, iconic Sony characters in this game than PS All-Stars did. Like, we got Cloud. They didn't have Cloud. They didn't have the Belmonts. They didn't have Snake. They didn't have, like, all those characters. Imagine if we start getting guest characters for this game. Might be getting too ahead of myself here, and I definitely am. What if we get some Cartoon Network characters up in here? As like I mean, who's DLC. the Cartoon Network rep you choose? Like, who's like the Sonic the Hedgehog of Cartoon Network? Like, uh, definitely wouldn't say the Sonic the Hedgehog of Cartoon Network, but I would definitely like Mordecai and or Rigby because I want to taunt and have them go, yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, uh, oh, dude, they, they, just getting a kill with them, oh, that, that's perfect, <laughs> and they get hand bone for their third taunt. It's it's all just it's perfect. Hand boning, uh, hand boning. <laughs> Please like, watch yes, regular show. It's such yeah, a good that show. That show is absolutely incredible. Uh, Steve, and also uh, Close Enough, which is literally regular show, but with, like, sex, drugs. It's and, great. And, yeah, and yeah. stuff. Also, uh, Steven Universe, that could be another one, maybe. And I'm just saying this because I would want the Cartoon Network characters to get their own shot at being in a good platform fighter. Because, like I said, there is one for Cartoon Network, but it was very, very low budget. You know, like, kind of like that side little, like, $30 game. It, it, not, not as, not as, like, big as this where like it's the people who made slap city and i couldn't agree with you more like the immersion and like caring about it is so difficult and me and dennis felt the same way on our podcast right where it's like slap city as good of a game as it is there is going to be a big group of people that are only going to care about it for so long because it's like original characters in the modern age you know it's not like original characters in like mortal Kombat where they're iconic from years on end or street fighter for years on end it's not the same thing you know it'll have that yeah. scene it'll still exist but they're not going to compete with SpongeBob motherfucking SquarePants. <laughs> all right? Like, everyone knows who SpongeBob SquarePants is. The place where I work has a giant theme park catered around SpongeBob SquarePants. The whole freaking, like, entertainment center, the mall, was celebrating his birthday. They were doing quizzes with people in the lines about, like, the fucker's life. Do you think they're going to do that with that duck motherfucker? <laughs> like, the people? <laughs> no. They're not going to do that. No. So, like, it's not like not to doubt on Slap City. I'm sure that game is phenomenal. But people aren't going to care about it as much. When it comes to platform fighters, Smash set the standard and breaks it every single time they release a new DLC character. Where, up until now, I felt like absolutely nothing could compete since the game was just a celebration of gaming. And now... We have this, another collection of just amazing IPs that all these other, like, independent, like, indie fighting games couldn't really provide, especially since they're independent studios that don't have access or own all these characters, nor the money to get the licensing or anything. This is the yeah. perfect case scenario where something similar to Smash could have actually happened. And, and Kyle, if we are living in the reality where the attention from Smash Brothers is actually going to be dragged away by the Nickelodeon fighting game. <laughs> I want to know what drugs you put in my coffee one morning, because I cannot believe this is the reality that we're living in. I mean, listen, multiverse is, is kind of the theme of this week's episode. So, you know, it, it's oh, definitely that's right, all, Loki. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's definitely a very, uh, very fitting, but. Yeah, listen, I'm I'm with you. I agree with everything you said. And folks, let us know. Let interact with us. What what 
uh, Nickelodeon character do you want to play as in this game? Um, yeah, but let us let us know below. Interact with us, uh, David, my friend. Thank you so much for joining me this week. Appreciate you. Meow, Nigel. <laughs> and I'll make I'll make sure to put all your all your stuff in in the Twitter description below. So I uh, appear to have been hit in my left eye. Alas, <laughs> they're not whales; they do gongs. Oh, uh, but thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you doing that, my friend. Thank you for having me on to talk about this. This is this is a dream. This game is literally just a fever dream. I feel yeah, like we don't wake up any second now. <laughs> yeah, every, everything everything will be down below. But follow David on Twitter at Nintunist. Uh, check out the Double D Experience uh, wherever you listen to your platforms, uh, which are wherever you listen to your platforms on your your podcast. There we go. <laughs> Wherever you listen to your podcast, it's been a long night. Yes. Uh, th- uh, th- thank you once again for uh, joining me, my friend. Yeah, no, my pleasure. Always funny. Uh, no, sometimes funny, sometimes serious, always off the cuff. I have a comedy banter podcast that I do with my buddy Dennis. We just released our episode where we talked about uh, Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. So in case you didn't get your fix from this one, feel free to check that out. It'll be in the description below. But enough shilling. Kyle, thank you so much for having me. And holy God damn it, if you are not following the if you are not following like the cooped up pod on Twitter and also like just subscribe to it wherever you listen to your podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, <laughs> whatever, I'm gonna tell you something right now. Your parents might be related. <laughs> Cause oh you're God. probably just really fucking stupid if you're not subbed to this podcast already. <laughs> so please go down in the description and follow cooped up pod. Follow the cooped up podcast already. And if you're not, you uh might just be dumb. Just saying. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. All right, folks, that is going to do it for this episode of Cooped Up. I hope you guys enjoy this new format. I'm trying some new stuff right now. I feel like we're getting into like really into a different groove of Cooped Up. You know, where I'm experimenting with some new theme music this week. Let me know if you guys like it. I'm looking for your feedback. I'm trying to make this feel a little bit more professional, a little bit more easier for me to stomach. Uh, and yeah, let me know what you guys think. So if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and uh, you know follow us on social media at Cooped Up Pod. You can follow me on Twitter at Koopa NJ. Um, yeah, uh, you know email us at CoopedUpPod at gmail.com. And I'm gonna put everything below for our, uh, you know our guest today and other things that we mentioned. And, you know, including again the Double D experience and uh, their episode on the Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl which is out now across, uh, you know, podcasting platforms. But yeah, you know, we're going to get back to some uh, regularly scheduled programming next week. Uh, probably going to talk about Space Jam. Probably going to talk about some other stuff. Uh, you know, we shall see what uh, comes up. But until then, folks, have yourselves a wonderful evening and take care.